Hello there. I am your professor. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm having too much fun with this equipment. By the way, I have been, I have had a cold, so I apologize if I sound congested. It's because I am. Well, anyway, I wanted to talk to you about All That You Love Will Be Carried Away, our first story to read. And in so doing, I want you to see that we are laying the foundation for the entire class. Meanwhile, I wanted to talk to you about some humanities terms uh, from All That You Love Will Be Carried Away. Uh, now, you'll notice, you, you will notice, you haven't yet, uh, but I'm not going to hold you accountable for these terms. I will not test you on them. Um, I don't want you just parenting these terms back to me, but with some fill-in-the-blank definitions. Instead, I want you to chew on these terms. The grades come from other things in this class. I refuse to make it a class about memorizing humanities terms and spitting them back out at me. Who cares, right? But I want you to be familiar with them so you can chew on them and factor them into what we're doing in the class. See if you can apply this stuff we're going to talk about to the stuff you encounter every day, which is a good way to build an understanding for them. Uh, for, and feel free to reach out to me, by the way, uh, and ask me stuff like, hey, is this thing I witnessed or experienced, does that count as irony? Is that a good example of irony? Stuff like that. I love to talk about it. And uh, so you can always send me those texts or emails. Stay in touch with We can have conversations about these terms. Now, first, before we get into that, I want to give you a reading tip. Now, you notice uh, in this King story, he's talking about stuff, and all of a sudden, he says these weird phrases like save Russian Jews, collect valuable prizes, he's got a notebook, and all of a sudden, you may have been reading and be like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> what does that mean? And you're like, but it doesn't make any sense. And this is a reading tip I would give you, and this is in general, not just in fiction. Uh, be patient. Um, especially in fiction, writers often don't tell you everything in order, one at a time, straightforward. They want to build suspense. It's kind of like they want to tease you. So like here, this is a teaser. Save Russian Jews, collect valuable prizes. What could that possibly mean? And if you're used to, or if you want a writer to give you everything up front in chronological order, you may have quit reading at that point and go, I guess I just don't understand the story. And especially if you're not an experienced reader, you may think you just, you know, may, you may go, I'm too dumb to understand. That's not true. I mean, be patient. So you can see in this story, you know, it doesn't make any sense here, but as you read and find out he's collecting graffiti, um, you know, it makes more sense. It's still a weird story, right? But it makes more sense at least why he has these things in this notebook. So train yourself to be secure enough to keep reading and try filling in the blanks of understanding as you go. If you get to the end of a story and you still don't know what's happening, well, then it's time for ask for help, right? But until then, Try to wait for the writer to reveal everything to you that you need to understand the story. Okay, so that's a general reading tip. Keep reading when you don't understand. See if it makes more sense as you go. All right, so let's talk about some terms. First of all, irony. Now, this is a misunderstood concept. Misunderstood concept. Uh, people think irony is just stuff that sucks, like in the Atlantis Morissette song. Uh, that's not irony, though. That's just stuff that sucks. Irony deals in interesting opposites. So like in the, St the Stephen King story, the pillows and the children's corpses, you notice those are opposites. You think of pillows as comfortable and comforting, <laughs> but now you're talking about baby corpses? Those things are very opposite, and it's kind of an interesting opposite. It sticks out to you. Um, you, you know, you have this dry, boring description with a sudden phrase about suicide thrown in. He's talking about the snack machine and getting a, a downstairs room instead of an upstairs room and all of a sudden in the room he had to commit suicide and you're like whoa wait a second <laughs> and that's a that's an ironic thing king does there he takes the boring and all of a sudden puts in this statement that's usually very dramatic and those two come together in a way that's interesting now next symbolism uh as another writer uh, we will discuss in this class says often a writer as they're writing um uh, Stuff in the story or people in the story begin to accumulate, in other words, gather meaning. We'll look more about, more at this uh, later in the semester. But a good writer just tries to go with that as much as possible, even if they didn't consciously mean to insert a symbol. Now, English professors have a bad reputation for attaching symbolic meaning to everything uh, in a story. But the truth is, uh, as we will start talking about in the next video, 
I'm not here to teach you to find the true meaning of any of this stuff, including any possible symbols. In fact, as you will see, the true meaning of a piece of art, if it can even be guessed at at all, is not the only way to think about it. And in fact, it's usually not the most interesting or impactful way to think about art. More on that later. For now, suffice it to say that our subconscious brains are extremely active all the time. And all of us are prone to attaching meaning to things and events we create or do, and also to deriving meanings from things and events others create or do. Now, as I pointed out in the quiz, one can possibly see the notebook itself in this story as symbolic of Alfie and his life. It's easily misunderstood. It's tattered and worn out. He doesn't know how the people are going to react to it. It's full of contradictory and sometimes confusing and nonsensical messages, etc. It's basically, you could see that as a symbol for Alfie himself. But So it's not the only way to look at the notebook as a symbol for Alfie. Uh, who knows what Stephen King meant? He may not even know. More on that later. And of course, you got the protagonist and antagonist, those terms. Uh, you know what those are, right? Pro means going forward or positive. Anti means against or apart from. Uh, so the protagonist is like the lead character who's trying to accomplish something, and the antagonist is whatever is getting in the way of that character accomplishing whatever they're trying to accomplish. Uh, and so you got a protagonist here, but we debated, you know, in the quiz, you know, I ask you who maybe is the antagonist. Maybe Alfie himself is his own antagonist. You could say maybe it's life, depression, something. That would be the antagonist of the story. And finally, let's talk about an analogy. You see this sentence. Sometimes when you were coming along the highway, you saw big curls of rubber that had unwound from the recap tires some of the independent truckers used. That was what he felt like now, thrown tread. So that's what we call an analogy, A-N-A-L-O-G-Y. Looks like a term for a medical procedure, but it's not. It's analogy, and so an analogy is where you, you describe something a certain way that's easier for the reader to understand so they can understand a more complicated thing. So he's using something we've all seen, shredded tires on the side of the road that are just laying there. Nobody cares about them. They're just forlorn and gone, useless, just laying there. You just pass them by, barely even notice them. That's an analogy for Alfie's depression where he finds himself as a person, just sort of feeling like thrown rubber on the side of the road. So that's an overview of some of the humanities terms that came up in this story. Um, like I say, these aren't to memorize and put on flashcards, but think about them because they're interesting. And as we move forward in the class, they'll come up again. All right. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about this story more specifically and some really weird ways of thinking about this story and about the world and about art in general, but that will nonetheless, or can nonetheless, lead to very practical, useful things in your life. All right, so that's a teaser for the next video. Until then, have a great day, and I'll see you.